Hello and welcome back to another video. Today's video has been prompted by a question um, from Nadia. So thanks very much Nadia for the question um, regarding how to tie a sensor to a Homeworks QS keypad. So thank you for that question. Um, this kind of follows on for people who have not checked my previous videos from um, a series of videos that I've done uh, regarding Lutron Designer. Um, so please check back to see uh, the progress on those uh, videos to uh, get a bit of an idea of, of uh, how we've got to where we are now. Um, but I'm just going to start a brand new uh, database here, um, as you can see in the uh, on the screen. And we've got a sample room. So let's get into it. Okay, so here's our sample room. Um, there's absolutely nothing, I don't think there's any programming in here at all at present. Um, no controls or equipment. So we'll just do a quick uh, start from scratch on this one. Um, so let's have a quick look at adding some controls. So first off, we will add a keypad. Um, which we'll leave at default name and everything there. Um, and we shall add some equipment. We obviously, with every Lutron Homeworks QS system, we need a processor, and we get a power supply um, at least, and obviously um, some control equipment. So we'll also add um, a DIN rail power module here. And there we go. So that's that's a pretty much pretty basic system. Um, obviously, we need to go to uh, link assignment. So we'll quickly do this. Um, I shall add my control station and adaptive dinner there. That's correct. Um, notice on this on the processor kind of all the link assignment screen. This is basically the the processor, um, and we have a an RF uh, link. Um, you can change that to be a wired link also, um, and various other um, various other protocols to better control different um, pieces of equipment. Um, but we'll leave it as RF for now because I'll show you something um, a little later, um, a, an alternative PIR sensor that you could use. But basically, what we're going to be using here is a third-party sensor, um, a bit like a bit like this one. Um, so this is a standard sensor, it's actually by TimeGuard, this one, um, if you're in the UK. Um, and if you look on the top here, it's got some volt-free contacts. At the moment there's a little black link um, between the live and the contact, uh, the, cl the contact closure on the PIR, but that can be removed and then basically you will be left with a volt-free contact. And then on the back of the keypad, you will see there is a connection. Um, that shows uh, COM1, CCI2 and CCI1. Now um, the CCI1 and 2 is basically an input on the back of the keypad um, which allows you to fit a PIR sensor uh, for example um, or some kind of remote switch, it could be a toggle switch, it could be um, a third-party device that has a contact closure, you want to trigger something. So basically you get on the back of the keypad a an input, a contact closure input, um, which is great. So on every keypad you've got the ability to connect a third-party piece of equipment um, to control something. So what we will do with this scenario is we'll use our time guard PIR, which I just showed you, and it will be connected into the back of the keypad. And to do that programming you simply do this. So if we go to program, um, we will go to devices. So on the on this page, um, basically where our keypad is, um, you will see a little tab here called CCI. So on this tab, you have your contact closure inputs, basically. Um, that's what is the same as the back of the keypad. And um, so if I just quickly go back to design, we'll add a load in this room. So we'll just start, um, for example, some downlights. 
oh, spelling's a bit wrong there. So we've got some down lights in there. Um, I shall add that to our, assign it to our adaptive dimmer, just so we've got something to control for this example. Um, under program then, um, we shall, now as you can see now, we've got in our sample room, we've got a down light circuit. So um, we've got our buttons and then on the back of the keypad, um, you can see the QS bus um, connector here and then next to it are our contact closure inputs, uh, common contact closure input 2 and contact closure input 1. Um, so basically you can see, um, you can select which input you want to use. Uh, contact closure input one or two. Um, th those are selected here by just clicking on the connector. And then in this section of the software, um, you end up with a slightly different representation of what you can do. Um, you've got close and open, so basically that's the two positions of the contact closure. Um, you can alter the button type to just be a single action, to be toggle, to be dual action, to be raise lower. So this input can do many different things. And that's with lighting zones. And um, if we move to um, other things, and you can obviously you can obviously control various other things. Um, unlock, lock, various things. Um, you've got the raise and lower there, so it could be a master raise or just a single scene raise. Um, toggle. So basically, um, it'll be a press on, press off scenario. And we're just going to use single. Um, Single action, I think, for now. Actually, no, we'll use toggle because that's probably the best way um, of using this with a PIR. Um, so the what we'll do here is we will, so we're on the contact closure input here. Um, so what we want to do when the PIR closes the contact, so when movement is, is sensed, um, we can um, actually we're on toggle there. Uh, sorry, we need to go to lighting zones. So we want this to bring on a light. Yeah, sim simple scenario here. So in a room, we want the PIR to bring on a light when there's when the contact closure is closed during activity. So you simply uh, tick the circuit you want to be um, affected by by this closure, um, and w w whatever level you want it to be set to. Um, so we're going to say 100%, and then the off level is automatically set to zero there. So this is a very basic. Um, situ uh, scenario where you can tie in a PIR, a third party PIR, um, to a keypad. And it's as simple as that. You just literally wire your two connections back to the PIR contact closure uh, um, outputs. This has to be volt free, um, ideally. So a volt free uh, contact. Um, and that's as simple as it gets. Um, so let's just untick that quickly. An alternative is Lutron do provide their own uh, PIRs. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know the model numbers, but they are, I believe they're 24 volt powered. So they're a low voltage powered PIR, which might not be suitable if you have an installation where you just want to um, use the wire, the existing wiring that may be 230 volts or 110 volts. Um, but, uh, but an alternative that Lutron have are wireless PIRs. So if we go back to our controls tab here, and you can and we move across to sensors, you've got some various options here. This is actually the the PIR I was talking about here. I believe it's 24 volt. It's got a contact closure in it. It's only an occupancy sensor. You must remember with all of these situations here that they are all only occupancy sensors. Um, they do not detect light levels, um, which is another good reason actually to. Um, possibly use a third-party PIR because in most cases they they obviously uh, operate um, using light level and movement passive infrared sensing. Um, so for this example then we shall um, add a uh, an occupancy sensor here. So um, let's add this wireless one. There we go, so that'll be called sensor one. Remembering that we still need to go back up to our link assignments. Um, because this is wireless, we obviously need, in fact, there's something I've missed here, we need to add some extra equipment. Um, these can be controlled via a QSM, I believe, or a hybrid repeater. Um, but on this occasion, we shall select a hybrid repeater. So let's add that to our project as well. Okay, back to link assignment. On our RF tab, we shall add 
our sensor and our hybrid repeater. And let's go back to equipment. And there we go. So that's so that's all done. Um, so then when we go to program, um, obviously you, you've got the commissioning phase where you activate um, the hybrid repeater and obviously all the, all these devices. Um, I've just clicked on activate and it's probably going to take ages now to, to clear. But yeah, obviously you've got your devices you need to, to activate on both of your links for any of this to work. But this is just a quick overview of how you tie um, a PIR into a uh, Homeworks QS keypad. Um, so if I go back to program, and on here you will now see um, if I go to occupancy, uh, sorry sensors. Uh, is it occupancy? Yes, it's occupancy. Um, so this is where um, this is where you basically see your occupancy sensors. Um, we've just got the sample room occupancy sensor here, and once again you can set additional timeout um, to what may well be programmed on the sensor itself and um, you can select the room uh, so when the room is occupied you basically want it to go to 100% or that's what I've told it here or 50 at 50 percent and then on occupied you want it, you want the sensor to switch off um, you can also um, you've got all the conditionals and various things you can do with the programming here as well and the sensor type you can make it occupancy or vacancy so you're either sensing whether someone's entered the room or whether someone's, someone's uh, exited the room, which is quite quite good if you've got a keypad as well. So you would set um, vacancy um, in the situation where you have a keypad. So someone comes into the room, switches the lights on, and then when they leave the room, they forget to turn the lights off. Um, so basically that's a good situation for vacancy. Um, the grace period um, is basically the time... Um, it has, tells us here, look, the grace period is a set time duration, 15 seconds or 30 seconds, that begins when the lights are automatically turned off, during which the lights will automatically turn back on in response to motion. Grace period provides uh, is provided as a safety and convenience feature in the event that the lights turn off while the room is still occupied. So it almost eliminates that problem where the lights may begin to turn off and you wave your arms around and it, they don't turn back on immediately so it kind of eliminates that issue um, so that the user does not need to turn the lights back on by the normal method so especially if you're using in conjunction with the switch it gives you a 15 or 30 second grace period to move to to, to get the lights back on um, I mean ideally you'd be considering a decent uh, timeout uh, setting um, so that you wouldn't really come across that problem um, but yeah, so there's an extra extra bit of uh, programming there. So um, I don't want, I don't want this video to be too long. So that's just a basic um, explanation, really, of how you tie in a sensor to a a, a keypad, basically. Um, I mean, this the, the wireless solution here that I've just highlighted uh, doesn't tie into a into a keypad, um, but that is obviously Lutron's solution of a of a sensor. Um, but using the, um, if we go back to program and devices, so using the keypad here on the back, you've got your contact closures, which can offer you um, similar control as you would with a Lutron um, sensor, but um, just using those inputs on the back of the keypad, which is great. And actually, it's slightly more cost effective. And to be honest, I prefer using a sensor that has light detection as well. Um, so obviously, when it's if it's if it's daylight, you don't necessarily want the PIR bringing the lights on all the time. So it's always it's often nice to have the the dual function of a present sensor and a light sensor as well, um, which you don't get unfortunately with the uh, Lutron sensors. Something to look out for there. So anyway, so that's the video for today. Um, uh, any more questions, any other kind of requests on uh, or questions you have with Lutron or Reiko controls that we've done on some of our other video series, um, please ask. Please subscribe to my channel. Um, the numbers are going up nicely, so it seems that um, some of my videos are interesting enough uh, for people to be uh, subscribing to my channel, which is great. Um, so thanks very much, and uh, bye for now.